Welcome to Volkswagen TV Training. Thank you for joining us again. There is hardly any switch in a modern car that switches a power consumer on or off directly. Nearly every switch is connected to a control unit. This means if you look for faults in switches of modern vehicles, you have to look for faults in networked functions as well. We already dealt with the topic of fault finding in networked functions in Volkswagen TV training of March 2010. At the time, the reason for the program was a complaint. And we'll now have a look at that. Let's have a look at the first error pattern. I am the customer, you are the service advisor and my complaint is, the dip beam of my car doesn't switch off anymore. Yes, I can clearly see that. With the ignition switched on, all lights are on as well. Let's shed some light on that to find the root cause. We launched the tester already and selected test instrument mode. We now measure using the URDI cable. I connect the earth potential to the CAN adapter box as we want to measure a positive voltage signal and with the positive test probe end I measure the signal of E16. There is a very oscillating value, a very oscillating voltage of about 9 volts is displayed. This doesn't tell us anything. So you probably won't get a usable result when using the multimeter. And why this is the case, I'll ask the person who carried out the measurement, Dietrich Richter. How do we measure if we don't use the multimeter? We measure using the oscilloscope. That is the digital storage oscilloscope, or the DSO, to be able to define the switch positions exactly. The display of the multimeter is too slow. It only provides a reduced value. Therefore, it cannot be used for all purposes. If you use the multimeter for a measurement, it will often occur that you have to carry out various measurements several times, or that you have to carry out additional measurements. When you start to look for faults, you have to test all the functions of the system you have to check. In the guided fault finding, you will also have to check with the help of the wiring diagram, and then use the DSO, because only by using the DSO you can look at the voltage signals in detail and draw a conclusion for your diagnosis. But is a multimeter not designed to measure the voltage? Yes, it is. But in the switch circuits, we not only have constant voltage, but pulsating signals. And the multimeter cannot be used for this purpose. Not only is the signal between the electrical system control unit and the E1 switch a pulsating signal, but nearly all the signals between control units and switches are pulsating signals, and you have to carry out a correct diagnosis for these. Today we are going to provide you with additional information to the measurement that we have just shown you. In the training program of March 2010, the thought was that the dip beam was on all the time after the ignition had been switched on. You measured and found out that there was an interruption in the contact for the daytime running light. How is this related to the dip beam? Let's look at the wiring diagram. We can clearly see on this wiring diagram that a positive signal is coming in via this path. This positive signal comes from the SC13 fuse and it's the 30A terminal clip. This 30A terminal clip is connected to all the switches. This switch is closed and leads to the E16 entrance on the J519 electrical system control unit. We measured and found out that there was an interruption exactly in this line. As the control unit scans the switch position periodically, whether daytime running light is switched on or off, there is voltage here from the electrical system control unit. But there isn't any switch position that has been defined, because all the switches are open. 
Because of the interruption in the line, the switch seems to be open. Therefore, the control unit assumes that the switch position has not been defined and that I turn the light on for safety reasons. What do you measure with the DSO if this line is interrupted? We'll carry out this measurement. I've already selected the test instrument mode. I'll connect the DSO cable to the CAN adapter box to get an earth connection and the test lead to the E16 chamber. And I'll switch on the ignition. Now we just have to enter the DSO. And for a better overview, I'll switch off the B channel and we'll pull down the A channel. Here we can already see that there is a square wave signal. To see it more clearly, we'll reduce the time, which is measured in milliseconds per division. You can see the square wave signal. I'll click on the freeze image button. So, there is a square wave signal from the control unit to scan the switch. As the line is still open, because the fault is still there, we know that there is an interruption. Why would onboard voltage be okay in this case, while square wave voltage is not okay? To see this, we'll look at the structure of a control unit. Normally, in a control unit, there is an analog digital converter for the different signals. There is a microprocessor, a read-only memory, or random access memory. If the switch is open, there is a voltage from the controller. It flows off via a resistor to the internal earth of the control unit. As a result, the controller knows that if there is a voltage here and nothing happens, the switch is open. If the switch is closed, there will be onboard voltage here. The controller is supplied with voltage and it knows that the switch is closed, so there is a clear switch position. If we connect the DSO, as we want to measure the input signal into the control unit, we connect the positive line of the DSO here and the earth line to earth. If the switch is open, we can measure the controller voltage here, whatever it will look like. And if the switch is closed, we can measure the onboard voltage here, because it wouldn't matter whether we measure here or here if the switch was OK. This applies to all positive switched lines that send a signal to the control unit. Now we will have a look at the E1 light switch of the Golf 2006 electrical system. There are the following changes. We don't have an earth potential up here, but for the daytime running light, a square wave signal is applied, which is checked by the controller. If there is a square wave signal, this means that the switch is open, or in our case, that the line is defective. But first, we assume that the switch is open. If we closed the switch, the onboard voltage would overwrite this signal and the controller knows that the signal from the electrical system arrived and that we have closed the switch. In our case, the line was interrupted and the controller couldn't determine which switch had been closed and the daytime running light was switched on to be on the safe side. Some switches supply positive to the control unit, but it's not always like that. It might also be the opposite. So there are switches that let a signal from the control unit through to Earth. An example is the oil pressure switch. That's correct. In the Tiguan, which we took as an example, we installed two oil pressure switches, but before checking these electrically, we measured the hydraulic oil pressure with a manometer in three steps, as described in the repair guide. 
We did this to see whether the oil pressure was correct in the vehicle. Let's talk again about the switches. One switch with a low switching point of 0.7 bars plus minus 0.15 bars is referred to as F378, and the switch for the higher oil pressure with 2.55 bars plus minus 0.4 bars is referred to as F1 in our case. But first, we'll have to look at the wiring diagram to see how the switches are connected. We scroll the wiring diagram down. We have to scroll down quite far to be able to find the F378 oil pressure switch. And we can see that it is directly connected to Earth. If we zoom the picture in, we can see the connections, and there is only one connection. Because of the circuit symbol, you can clearly see that the switch is a normally open contact. This means, if oil pressure is built up, the switch lets the potential through to Earth. What are the electrical differences to our first example in which positive is switched? To explain this, let's have a look at the structure of a control unit. You know the analog digital converter for the signals, the microcontroller, the read-only memory or random access memory. If we have a switch that is earth switched, we get a positive potential from the control unit through the high ohmic resistor to the control unit outlet, and the controller measures the voltage here, whether the voltage is really applied. And if the voltage is applied to the controller, the controller knows that the switch is open. If this switch is closed, there is a voltage drop here, because there is a high ohmic resistor in the circuit. The voltage drops, and the control unit knows that the switch is closed. This is the theory. But of course, we want to know what the signal through the F378 looks like in practice. We measured on a Tiguan. We measure the voltage between the F378 oil pressure switch and Earth. We connect the measuring cables of the digital storage oscilloscope to Earth and to the feed line to F378. We start the long time measurement in the DSO. At the beginning, the measured voltage is about 12 volts. When the engine is started, the voltage drops for a short time because of the high starter current. Then the measured voltage has a constant value of 0 volts when the engine is running. We checked the F378 or showed the signal in the recorder mode. You will see that the recorder mode cannot always be used for these kinds of checks. But to show you the principle, we have recorded the whole cycle in this mode. Of course, by pressing the zoom button, we could zoom the curve in. Let's look at the course of the signal. At the beginning, there is a 12-volt signal from the control unit, as we have already explained. This point here means that the ignition has been switched on. Then, we start the engine. So the voltage drops because the starter needs a lot of current. Then the engine starts. Oil pressure is produced. We have checked it in advance. The switch closes, which means that the voltage drops to zero volts. This means that the switch works properly at this state. When we switch off the ignition, it will take some time until the oil pressure is reduced. The switch opens again, and then the voltage rises immediately, because there is no current flow to the earth potential on the engine. So we have 12 volts when the switch is open, and 0 volts when the switch is closed. You should always remember that. But how much current flows through the switch? 
It's not a problem to determine this. We'll just change the test setup a bit. Normally, we have a zero-point milliampere value. This means current doesn't flow. If the switch is closed, current flows through the circuit. That is a current flow of about 9.4 milliamperes. So indeed, current flows in this kind of switch circuit, even though it is a quite low current flow. And the flowing current proves that the circuit is really closed when the switch is closed. But there is not only one oil pressure switch, we've already said it, but there's another one. And it works quite in the same way as F378. The measuring setup with F378 and the DSO remains. Additionally, we now measure the voltage on the second oil pressure switch, F1, with the DSO2. We connect the measuring lines to earth and to the switch too. When the engine isn't running, there are about 12 volts on both channels. The signal from the F378 is the yellow curve and the one from F1 is the green one. The signal from the F378 falls immediately after the engine is started to a constant value of 0 volts. The signal from F1 falls to 0 volt too, but rises to 12 volts after a few seconds. If we accelerate the engine to more than 3000 revolutions per minute, the voltage of F1 drops to 0 volts, but rises to 12 volts as soon as the engine speed is less than 3000 revolutions. Two switches, two curves, two levels, one at 12 volts and the other one at 0 volts. And this applies to both switches. So where is the difference? To explain this, we'll look at the overall picture in the recorder mode. When the engine isn't running, the potential from the control unit on both switches is 12 volts. When the ignition is switched on and the engine is started, both curves show a voltage drop and then the two lines fall to zero volts. The oil pressure of the F378 switch, that is the yellow curve, is more than 0.7 bars, so the switch lets the potential through to earth. After some time, the earth potential of the second switch, F1, rises to 12 volts. The engine is still idling, that is the oil pressure is more than 0.7 bars, but the oil pressure isn't 2.55 bars yet. Then we increase the engine speed, and when we reach the oil pressure, the second switch, F1, lets the potential through to earth, and then the potential is 0 volts. We repeat that twice, and in the end, we decrease the engine speed. The engine is idling. The 2.55 bar switch opens. So you can see that the voltage rises here. Then we switch off the engine, and after a short time, we are familiar with that, the signal of the F378 rises to 12 volts. So both switches are open again, and the 12 volts come from the control unit. How to check switches professionally is our topic today in Volkswagen TV training. We have another example for a switch that lets a signal through to earth that is F266, that is the switch for the bonnet. The F266 switch indicates whether the bonnet is closed or not. If the bonnet is closed, the switch is open. And if the bonnet is open, the switch is closed. To see how this switch is connected to the control unit, we will look at the wiring diagram. We have an overview here. The positive side of it is directly connected to the F519 electrical system control unit. And now, let's have a detailed look at the wiring diagram. We zoom in a bit. And then we can see that the F266 switch is open when it's in a resting state. Below, it is connected to the sensor earth and via the 373 earth point to other switches. So, when in resting state, the switch is open. That is, the bonnet is normally closed and current doesn't flow. 
How and where do we have to measure if we want to check the switch? We connect the black DSO-1 cable to Earth and we connect the positive line to the positive side of the T2N because we have a switch that lets the signal through to Earth. We can find this plug contact. It's quite easy to access on the radiator at the top left. And normally we check at the point that can be accessed most easily. And we used the Tiguan to check it. But you probably know that the switch is also used in other models. We measure the voltage between control unit inlet and earth. We establish the connection with a Y cable. We connect the digital storage oscilloscope to the Y cable. We carry out the measurement as a long time measurement in the recorder mode. If the bonnet is open, there isn't any voltage. If we lock the bonnet, there is a voltage. We assumed that we would get onboard voltage, but the measured voltage is much lower. If we unlock the bonnet, the voltage drops to zero volts. An open bonnet means that the switch is closed, and a closed bonnet means that the switch is open. It took me a long time to understand that. But it is as you said. Let's have a look at the structure of the control unit again. That is the circuit for the F266. There is a positive potential from the control unit via the high ohmic resistor towards control unit outlet and through to the switch. If the switch is open, current cannot flow and the control unit measures the voltage here that is applied up here. This means that in the vehicle electric system, the switches are normally open if they are in standby, because we have already seen that if a switch is closed, current flows. So for the normal state of a switch, you choose an open switch to control the inlet so that the current consumption of the control unit and the vehicle electric system is not too high. Fair enough, but according to our explanation I assumed that we would get onboard voltage, but we didn't. The voltage was much lower. How did this result come about? Let's start with the switch signal that we got with an open bonnet. So let's have a look at the DSO picture again. The engine bonnet was open and we have a zero volt signal because the potential is sent through the switch to earth. That's okay. The switch position has been determined correctly. The switch is closed. Then I locked the bonnet and we expected to get 12 volts, but we could just see 2 volts in the DSO. At this point, I want to add that this signal is actually a square wave signal, but we compressed it to show the whole cycle clearly. We expected to get 12 volts, but we just got 2 volts. So this means that there is a voltage drop, which in turn means that there is a resistor in the switch. If the signal is not 0 or 12 volts, it's possible that the control unit does not see that the switch position is correct, so a fault might be indicated, and you will not always be able to find this out with the measured value block. 12 volts or not, but we have a perfect square wave signal with a perfect zero line, with a perfect increase and a perfect decrease to zero. Why does the control unit not see that? Because the control unit expects about 12 volts. Although the control unit has a range of variation around the 12 volts in which it defines a signal as being perfect, the control unit will probably not be able to use a voltage drop like this to determine a clear switch position. 
It might be possible that if an alarm system is installed, and if water gets in, that the resistance in the switch is reduced, and that the voltage drops even more. Then the customer might complain that there is an alarm from the alarm system from time to time, but that they have operated everything correctly. For a fault diagnosis, it might be useful to disconnect the plug that leads to the main contact switch to the F266. So, this switch will not be included in the measurement, and you will see that the signal rises to 12 volts. Then you will be sure that the switch is defective and has to be replaced. There is a third case, switches that don't send the full onboard voltage and aren't earth switched either. And a typical example is the window lift switch at the switch module on the driver's side. Every window lift switch has two positions, that is, two positions for opening the window and two positions for closing the window. So, five positions, including the neutral position. What does the window lift switch wiring diagram look like? To see this, let's look at the wiring diagram. We can clearly see the J386, the door control unit for the driver's side. Then we can see various connections to the switch unit, and the switch unit has a common earth connection to vehicle earth. Let's have a detailed look at the E40 switch. This is the neutral position. The switch is open. There are three resistors and one direct connection. So the control unit must be able to see four switch positions and the neutral one. How can it do that? We'll use the DSO to have a look at that. I'll connect the DSO1 cable to the earth of the door control unit and chamber 5 of the E40 switch. We'll see a picture here. I'll edit it. For us to see everything better, I'll switch off channel B, and I'll pull down channel A for us to see the signal better. I'll also use the trigger mode to record the signal. Now we can see the neutral position. If I press the freeze image button and put cursor 1 into the signal, we can see that there is a voltage of 11.52 volts. Now I'll operate the lowering position, position 1, which means downwards. Then I'll press the freeze image button. I'll stop the process. We can see here that the square wave signal has been pulled down because of the resistance towards Earth. So, if we go to the signal with the cursor, we'll see that there is a voltage of about 1.6 volts. So, the control unit will see that this is the first lowering position. Then, we'll look at position 2. And we can clearly see that position 2, that is, lowering completely, is the direct connection to Earth. Voltage is reduced completely, and it is zero volts. Depending on the switch position, different voltages are measured. What is it like when the window is closed? To see this, I will operate position 1 of lifting. I have also pressed the freeze image button. We can clearly see that the signal is different from the two positions before. If we look at the voltage of the signal, we can see that it is 7.3 volts. Now I'll operate position 2 of lifting. Here we have another voltage value too, that is 4.02 volts. So because of these various voltage values, this different current flow, the control unit knows which window position the driver wants to have.
If we combine all switch positions in one measurement, we can see the principle. That's correct. We'll do that in the recorder mode, and then you will clearly see that the recorder mode cannot always be used, and that it's better to test in the auto mode. So I'll change the DSO settings. I'll switch from measuring to recorder mode. I'll reduce the time per division to 0.5 second per division, for example. I'll start a long time measurement. I will set the time to two minutes, for example. And if I press the freeze image button, the long time measurement will start. Now I'll operate the window. First position downwards. Second position downwards. Neutral position again. First position upwards. Second position upwards. We are in neutral position again, and I can stop the long time measurement. We can clearly see that there are different voltage levels. These were the neutral positions. That is, first position downwards, second position downwards, first position upwards, second position upwards. If I click here with the cursor, you'll clearly see, because we have a reduced signal in the recorder mode, that there are different voltage values. So it's better to use the auto mode for these kind of signals and zoom in the signal to such an extent that you can analyze it well. If you consider the various voltage values, what does that mean for fault finding? When looking for faults, we have to carry out an extensive functional check of this switch unit. What is working and what isn't working. For example, the window cannot be closed or opened by operating the E40 switch, but the window lifter can be operated by using the convenient open-close function. Then we don't have to look for the fault at the window lifter, but have to look at the switch, because if the convenient function is used, this switch isn't used. What's more, let's imagine that we assume that there is an earth fault. If we can see that the diodes are on, we can rule out that there is an earth fault. But hold on a second. You have always said in your training programs, if you look for a fault in an electrical system, you have to measure the circuit under load if possible. And LEDs don't need a lot of current, so we can't speak of load, can we? So what do you think? How much current do diodes need? Not much, I guess about 15 or not more than 20 milliamperes. And if we think about the oil pressure switch, about how much current was needed to send a clear signal to the control unit, that was a value of about 9 milliamperes. This means there is enough load. We always check the circuit with all the components that belong to it. The conclusion at this point is, if the measurement indicates that this switch is defective, you can always carry out an additional check. That is, if you don't get the desired value, you can test one of the other switches that are identical in construction. In this way, you get a reference value. So no matter which signal the control unit sends, whether a 12-volt signal, a 5-volt signal, a square wave signal or whatever, you will always be able to see the signal clearly to be able to carry out an exact diagnosis if you work with the DSO in the auto mode. This was our training program on how to check switches professionally. The three most important points are always measure circuits under load in the future too. If possible, use the DSO, the Digital Storage Oscilloscope, and, if necessary, carry out a reference measurement. Dietrich, thank you for the information. You're welcome. My pleasure. And I wish you a successful working day. And because we've been able to help you in your day-to-day -day work, please click again on Volkswagen TV Training. See you. Goodbye.